Before may I say 500 pounds here? Nearly 100 percent. 500 pounds to start me. Surely at 300 only at 300. At 300 only at 300. May I say 320 now at 300 only. At 300 only 320 in the room. Before you. 350 at the steps. It'll be sold. 380 you want. 350. 380 on the phone. 400 pounds I'm dead. well, Sarah was convinced she had something special in that club, and she was right. We end on a high. Join us again for many more. But it's until then, for the past few months, we're here. Where is it? 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 We look back to the weekend sporting action and Cecilia Daly has the word forecast. That's how it works. And six seconds. Real things come when they're ready. Wait, so now. Oh, God, leave it. We are so pleased. No, it's not like, you know, one game to go. You know what I mean? Four game matches to go. I've got something which is. All those the 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 yeah, the first shot and seven in the back. The Something about there. They have lowered more than twelve. Back home. Makes his first public statement charged with this murder. And the death of this dementia patient, his family say they've been let down by the authorities. Good evening and welcome to Queen's Week 06. Prince Harry has made his disappointment clear at the outcome of the palace discussions over his decision to step back as a senior ruler. He said he and Meghan had hoped to continue serving the Queen and his military association, but unfortunately, it wasn't possible. In his first speech about his future as a champion, he added he was sad and it comes to this. But it's a sign of the pressures he was feeling that he chose to step back before he had ever made his search as a I will He is still on official duty. This morning, Harry was the royal president of the British government summit on Africa, a continent he cares deeply about. 
working with the British Prime Minister and several African leaders. It seemed like business as usual, but of course it wasn't. Last night at a private dinner, the Centre for HIV Charity in Southern Africa, he relaxed with friends and explained the decisions he's made about his future. It was very personal. It was very happy. I want you to hear the truth from me as much as I can share. Not as a prince or a duke, but as Harry, the same person that many of you have watched grow up over the last 35 years, but now with a clearer perspective. The UK is my home and a place that I love. That will never change. He recalled that at the time of their wedding, he and Meghan were excited, hopeful, and ready to see but the pressure of public scrutiny has been too much. They wanted to find a way to combine the continued service with greater freedom. No, sir, it was absolutely safe. Thanks, Megan, to look the same as it was not It looks like it, yeah. I'll hope we're going to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth, and our military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. So has the answer been requested to say that I have the same thing as you have been requested? But I hope that helps you understand what it's going to be. It's right. Well, he's not going to start with one, but, you know, because he's not far down in the order. But he's getting up as Jake, he's getting up as Royal Income, he's getting up as Heaven. Yeah. You know, he's getting up. He's had the pay to pay to pay to pay back for the house and the job. He's had it. He's had it. I'm 100% aware of that. That was her. That was her. The but he's given all his charities up, he's given his patronship up for a while. And there was how he's been told to? Do you know? Because he's not a patron, he's not a monarch there, he's not part of the monarchy, so we have to give it up. The problem is, all the things that he loves to do, the culture of the heroes and the soldiers and all those things, seems to get bad up. The transition has begun. Harry and Meghan must work out their new life. The rest of the royal family must adjust too to official life without them. The Duchess of Cornwall was given a hospice in Swindon. We miss Harry and Meghan. In seeking a new life, they are taking a leap of faith, as Harry put it last night. It may well be more challenging for him than it will be for her, which is why the door is being left open, just in case it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to me. Yeah, well, nearly, yeah, but doesn't work out. Right? Yeah, he's going to have to live here and do his patronship and rejoin the body. He's going to be in Canada and I'll be in there. They'll be together for both sides of the world. Sadness in the palace of being overall situation and incidentally we believe that Harry and Meghan left on a flight for Canada a short time ago from so regret the overall situation, but I don't think there are any doubts or second thoughts in the palace about the uncompromising position that they took in the deal with the Sussex. There is a feeling, I think, that the ambition expressed by the Sussexes to achieve a progressive new role within the royal family, which they set out in their personal statement, was perhaps a little naive was perhaps unduly influenced by thinking from across the Atlantic from people perhaps who don't fully understand how the British monarchy actually works. And of course there's been a considerable wariness of the risk of commercial exploitation of inappropriate projects, of reputational damage to the royal family and the monarchy as a whole. So I don't think there are any doubts from the Queen that they were right in taking the position that they did. One still unresolved matter, this trademark Sussex mm -hmm. Royal. Uh, the question is whether it's appropriate to have the word royal still in there, given the passage that the palace strategy is to remove them from royal life. The talks on that, I understand, are still continuing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They can't have, they can't have your cake and eat it. No. We were Sussex Royal's trademark. No, he's been, uh, he's been five years now. He's been badly advised. He's been badly advised. Our business correspondent, Emerson. Beals, it's been on this same spot for nearly 140 years, a cornerstone of Bournemouth's high street, and also in other provincial towns, 23 locations from the south of England all the way up to the city of Perth. But Beals failed to move with the times. 
it's very sad. It's part of our childhood. I mean, yeah, we both very much grew up locally, and uh, it's always been here. And we worked locally, and it was somewhere we came frequently. But we haven't been for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think it's another nail in the coffin for Paul McCoy Street, because once a store like this goes, who's going to take it? This business was losing money and looking for Pressure a buyer. Then yeah. business brought all Spoiler its non-running problems to mm. head. It's a head. He doesn't snap with the last for a million pounds as much as he does. It was a big fest of trading, but it was also the rattling with high rents and huge business rates bills. It's another sign of just how much pressure our retailers are under, well, Glenn's especially made these big them, department stores. What? It's been for a million pounds, right? Because uh, your man, Gavin um, Robinson, the MP for East Belfast, and that, well, their first little alliance one for East Belfast, they are there for the question about the stadium. People are messaging them and asking, will you know, players, so they were dying to know what was going on. Well, they were dying to know what was going on. They were dying to know what was going on. Well, they were dying to know what was going on. Well, they were dying to know so he was there, he's the one say, you know, the Republican culture minister would come down to say that this was saying, this was saying, all prior to the collapse of the agreement for 10 million pounds. So the, the whole committee, all of them, are all going to the Oval to say, you know, this was saying, all of this is the, this is the pros gang, this is, you know, obviously it must be plans already developed already. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. So, you know, nobody's seen the plan, but apparently, uh, what people were saying, they're going to get a meeting. He's going to get a meeting for as soon as possible. Because they need to get it done now before it ever collapsed tomorrow, I'll be another. You know, you need to get this is why they're all trying to fix for case and park to get signed off. And somebody said, and, uh, what was it? Somebody said to me, I was so marked off. Well, I didn't feel there that the crowd bought some of the Republicans who must live near. Here's some park. So the Grab Ball Association will be uh, pricing local sites and uh, just worried about their concerts in the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Not, you know, Grab Ball Association, that's a Republican, Chad Side, whatever. Can they pronounce his name? Well, not him, Sam. You know, so just go give an Earl Monty even though. Yeah. From the wooden beat there. Yeah, but then Crusaders, uh, Lin, you know, Linfield and other people up there would object to that. Black and Bell's way up to Glyph, we're going to stand on the table, but they're going to stand on the other end, so we've been knocking, so we've been trying to stand on. And then we've got to just move the picture, so the hell's already sold on for commission anyway. A suggestion comes in the latest leak of a government review of the project, and it's angered politicians in the Midlands and the north of England. We're seeing the benefits in Leeds of the promise of HS2 coming here. Businesses wanting to relocate here, and that greater connectivity, not just to London. The idea that this is just about travel to London is absolutely ridiculous, and Leeds nailing right now. At Euston, where hotels and office blocks once stood, the site is clear. The project has made progress, but the cost keeps on going up. The budget for the project five years ago was £56 billion. Last year, that rose to £88 billion. But today's leaked report adds almost £20 billion to that. £106 billion. And I think Spurs' stadium was a billion. Costing yeah. eight billion dollars. Spurs' was a billion. So they made 10 million every home game. So every home game they made 10 million. 10 years of every home game. Yeah. Yeah. So every home game they made 10 million. 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 So every home game they made 10 on Northern Powerhouse Rail, on East West Rail, on other transport infrastructure projects, will make a positive difference. Well, don't need to ask for so long, doesn't it? Everyone agrees that the links to cities like Leeds have to improve. Constructing a new railway is a long-term project. We've worked on HS2 for years. Now the government has to decide whether high speed with a high price tag is part of the answer. Tom Burridge, we've seen you.
Director General of the BBC, Tony Hall, has announced he's standing down with the summer after seven years in the role. He said he loved the corporation, but that he wanted his successor to be able to lead it through a formal review in two years' time. Our media editor, Mel Rajan, is here. So this was a surprise announcement. Well, certainly took us by surprise here. It, it was a surprise announcement. I think lots of um, Tony Hall's friends thought that he could stick around for another couple of years. No, it doesn't tell you what they're there. It's just our top down for it. Henry and Henry go to two. Uh, but the fact that he's going on to be chairman of the National Gallery suggests he's been some time in the works. And of course, he's been here for seven years. He's probably had the toughest job of any director general. He arrived, as you, I'm sure you remember, at a time of enormous crisis in the BBC when the information was actually saddled. There was a call of uh, mistreatment by the BBC of North Carolina, uh, the Conservative peer. Um, and I think his first job was to steady the ship. He then moved into a, a much tougher chapter, probably the toughest chapter of his reign, where he entered this negotiation over the Royal Charter, which governed the BBC. And he made two biggish concessions there. One over the, uh, the fact that the BBC would be co-opted into welfare policy, paying the uh, uh, free licenses over seven years, and also releasing the salaries of uh, the best paid on their broadcasters. And I think the next director general is going to have to be a tough negotiator who doesn't concede ground in that kind of thing. And then more recently, he's tried to reshape the BBC so it can be a player in the world of Netflix and Amazon. And that's with things like BBC Sounds and strengthening the iPad. So what about his successor there and the challenges ahead for whoever that may be? Your so sadly, I don't know scoop on who, it is, who it's going to be just yet. That's going to take six months. But um, it's an extraordinary job. I mean, the internal challenge is going to be, amongst other things, there's still lots of grievances over things like this. Hey, Samira Ahmed, the broadcaster, one here at Industrial Tribunal against BBC Friday before last. So there's lots of grievances there. But there's two massive external challenges. One is political. They've got a, the next director general is going to take an argument for conservative majority government to make the case for license fee. That government says that people would be publicly skeptical about the licensee, and then how on earth to take on the launch of Netflix in this commercial position. So, the ideal candidate, we were thinking about applying, would have commercial now, political experience, be a good manager, and intuitively understand young audiences, which means the perfect candidate would probably get this in East London. The police say that the men, all from the local seat in Ilford, are known to each other. Two people have been arrested. Our correspondent, Do you need a cuddle? A Sunday night on an East London street, and three bodies lie in the road. The latest victims of the worst violence. Knives pulled in a fight that ended right outside people's homes. Sabia heard the disturbance just before 8 o'clock and he tried to save lives. The knife on there, the, the shoulder and the chest, and the head was damaged by the hammer, and uh, all the hands were scratched by the knife. There's no two bodies here that um, just get to see the police were not all the ambulance, and all the people.